Hey guys, and welcome back to Working Aussie's Homestead. I'm Jordan, and today we are going to discuss a new series on our channel, and that is all about training and training with your dogs. And today's episode is going to be focused on why consistency and setting boundaries with your dog is super important when it comes to training. Let's get started. For most of today's video, we're actually going to go inside and talk some more. I know, these videos are gonna be a lot of talking, but I promise there will be also a lot of demonstrations of exactly what I'm talking about. But we're gonna go inside and talk a bit more about dog training. That was a perfect example of why consistency is key and part of the boundaries that I set with my dogs. One of the things I wanted to talk about was consistency today and why it's key in successful training as well as why setting boundaries is also important when it comes to your dogs. For us, we have six dogs that live in our house and a lot of people, when you tell them that, they go, you have six dogs in your house that must be crazy and then we tell them that they're Australian Shepherds and they go oh my gosh that must be so much energy but the reason why it works for us and it's not chaos all the time is because we set boundaries with our dogs to say what's allowed and what's not allowed and we're also very consistent with making sure the boundaries stay intact from both sides. The thing with using kennels is for our dogs and for a lot of other dogs is it's a great safe space. It's a place where you can remove them from any sort of situation, whether they're upset, whether they're scared. It's a great place for them to learn that that's an appropriate place to go and relax. So whenever we come inside from outside, whether they had just gone to the bathroom, whether they've been outside with us all day, the first thing they do is go into their kennels. And that is just a good reset the tone for inside the house. We don't want them to come in from playing outside and think, oh, we're just gonna continue the play inside. It's the expectation is we're gonna go to the kennels first, we're gonna all calm down a little bit, and then maybe we'll be able to come out of the kennel and play inside the house. So. First thing is setting that boundary and that tone with your dogs and not having it be necessarily a forceful thing because I feel like when you use the word boundary, a lot of people have a negative thought that pops into their head, but setting a boundary is super important with your dogs because otherwise they're going to set their own boundaries, which means you're not going to have any. And whether that be physical boundaries, whether that be boundaries when it comes to in the house, what's allowed to chew on, what they're allowed to sit on, setting the tone for everything is super important when it comes to your dog. And this will also play a huge role if you're getting a working dog, transferring that to when you're outside herding because your dog understanding and respecting those boundaries with you is going to be important when you're learning herding together and trying something new where you again have to set the tone and set the rules for them because that's essentially what herding is, is it's hunting but with rules. And so setting those boundaries initially is absolutely key as well as the consistency with them. So again, the first thing our dogs do every time they come back in the house from going outside is going into their kennels. And whether we you know, are headed out the door, whether we're going to feed them next, whether we're going to let them right back out, it doesn't matter because when our dogs understand that that's the expectation of them, it's super easy to have it be controlled, no chaos in this house. So in here, this is the room that I do a lot of our training and a lot of where I set the boundaries with our dogs. And then from here, that's where we can go outside, add in more distractions and really solidify our training a little bit more. But I wanted to bring you guys in here, show you what it looks like for our dogs to come inside from outside and that the expectation is for them to go right into the kennel and calm down. 
Obviously it's been a hot day, so they're all panting. They're kind of happy to be inside because we do have the AC on. So in this kennel, I have Piper and Ray, and I'm going to ask them to do a few specific things. But this is again why consistency is key. I am using treats today, but I don't use treats every time we train just because it can be important to start off with treats and then it's also important for me to not have them so that when I am expecting them to listen when we are outside, I don't always have treats on me. So it's important to me to do a little bit of both. Piper? The important thing with consistency is that you're consistent. I expect my dogs to listen every time that I work with them because I want them to listen every time that I work with them outside as well. Now, this is just very simple things with them. So something that Ray will sometimes do is be pushy. She is still a puppy, but this is her being pushy. Ah, ah. Thank you. Piper, lay down and stay. Girls, go. Piper. Okay, no. The biggest thing that I have seen, especially with dogs out in public, is that there is such a big lack of consistency. And you have the desired behavior, the desired goal for the dog, but if you're not consistent in training and having that expectation for them and that boundary for them every time, that dog is going to push those boundaries and not be consistent in their listening. And something that came up on social media the other day was actually a quote said, if you're inconsistent with your training, your dog will be inconsistent with when they listen. And the biggest thing with dogs, especially in today's society, Society is so many people expect dogs to listen a hundred percent of the time and be perfect a hundred percent of the time. I don't expect my dogs to be perfect, but I do expect them to listen pretty close to a hundred percent of the time because I work really hard on being consistent with setting the boundaries with them. And this can be as easy as if you don't want your dog up on the couch while you're eating don't let your dog up on the couch while you're eating. If you don't want them to be jumping up on you when you get home from work, don't let them jump up on you. Don't touch them, don't reward them in any sort of way for doing that behavior if you really don't want them to do it. So that's the biggest thing, especially with transferring that training and that mindset to hurting. A perfect example is if I want Ray to stop where she is and lie down, I want her to stop where she is and lie down. And that's the biggest thing with any sort of training is the consistency part. And that's honestly where a lot of people fall short because it is hard work. It is work to constantly remind yourself what expectations you're setting for your dog. So I want to encourage you, if you are struggling with any sort of behaviors with your dogs, which that'll be another video that we go over is common behaviors and how to fix them. But if you are struggling in any way with any of your dog's behavior, I seriously recommend and want to encourage you to work on the consistency of your behavior so that it can consistently change your dog's behavior. The biggest part about dog training is actually 90% human behavior. The other 10% is the dog behavior. It really is working on you and your consistency and what boundaries you set for your dog. Because otherwise, if you don't set boundaries and you're not consistent, your dog is just gonna live their best life, whatever that looks like. Whether that's getting into the trash every Tuesday night when you have to work, whether that is jumping on every person that comes through the door, whether that is not listening when you tell them to come anytime at all. It's super important to be consistent and set those boundaries so that your dog is successful in their training. I hope that you enjoyed and learned a little bit from today's episode. I know it's a little different, the series feels a little different, but I'm really excited to share a lot of the knowledge and a lot of the research that I've done over the last few years and my personal experience of 
owning dogs since I was eight. <laughs> I appreciate you for coming here and watching this video. If you liked it, please go and give it a thumbs up down below. Share it with your friends or family, or if you have friends that are struggling with training their dog and being consistent in setting boundaries, please share this with them. I hope that it helps, and I hope that understanding a little bit more of why it's important will help you with your relationship with your dog. Honestly, I am very proud of having been consistent enough with our dogs that the first thing they do when we come inside is go to their kennels because it just sets a great tone if we're in a rush to head out the door for something. I'm not having to say, oh my gosh, you go in that kennel. Oh my gosh, you go in that kennel. It's automatically the tone is they're going into the kennel. Again, thank you so much for coming and watching this. If you guys are interested in adding a working dog to your homestead, a working Aussie specifically, we do have a small Australian Shepherd breeding program. We have one to two litters a year. Piper is actually due with a litter in less than three weeks. We're super excited for that. We do have a website. I'll link it down in the description below. It's kellycrewaussies.com. You can go on there, fill out our puppy application, which is required to be on our waiting list. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. We do a lot with our Australian Shepherds. We raise using avid dog and puppy culture practices. We do a lot of extra special socializing, and we also make sure that they go to the perfect home based on their Volhart puppy aptitude test done at seven weeks old and we keep them until they're 10 weeks. If you have any questions about that please go and check out our website down below. Send me an email, send me a message. If you have not already go and hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment down below of some boundaries that you have set with your dog that you either are struggling with or that you're super proud of. I'd love to hear about it. We'll see you later.